It's Volo Week. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on guys? Welcome to yet another challenge week. This week we are looking at Volo Guide to Monsters as our build around card. This one is going to be hilarious and fun and all the great things that we hope from you guys when you are building your decks. Now, if you don't know what these things are, if you don't know what these challenge weeks are, we give you a build around card. We ask you to build a creative deck that can win games. Those are the two parameters we judge on. Uh, and we pit you guys against each other. So we take three suggestions from the ones submitted, and those are the ones we use throughout the week on Monday, on Wednesday, and on, excuse me, Friday. Ooh, that coffee. Uh, anyway. Today we have got a really awesome deck kicking us off that I cannot wait to jump into. Just as a reminder, like I said, we are judging on creativity on a scale of one to five, five being the most points you can garner, and then two on the number of wins out of three games. So maximum number of points there is three. We've already had a few submissions, but if you would like to submit a deck to this challenge week, you can do so in our Discord link down below. But without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump into today's deck. And here we are, everybody, with uh, our good old friend, Breaded and Fried. One of our winners, actually, of uh, last week's challenge, along with Spinaraptor. This one is really, really fun. So I'm going to go ahead and kick off the creative score we gave this one. I really wanted to give it a perfect five, but I feel like I can't do that, especially with the first deck of the week. That being said, this one is very, very good. We gave this a very, very solid four. Breaded and Fried, oh, it's crisp, my friend. It is very crisp. So the idea, obviously the idea is to get Volo Guide to Monsters out, uh, but then the idea is to play Risen Reef, uh, potentially in reverse order. And then the idea is to copy Risen Reef with things like Mirror Image, which as you notice is a shapeshifter. So that's a different type, which is gonna trigger Volo, which means you can do it twice. Uh, you can get Vizier of Many Faces, which is a Cleric, which is also a different type. And then you also have Spark Double, which is an Illusion, which is also a different type. Now on top of that, you can use Spark Double in particular to copy Volo because uh, this loses the Legendary subtype. Uh, and so we can actually get multiple triggers off of Volo to get multiple copies of Risen Reef, to get multiple triggers off of Risen Reef, to dig through our deck very, very quickly and hopefully win with Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, uh, the one of in the deck, but the ability to win off of this card is very real with this list. Now, we do have Panharmonic on here as a way to double up on those triggered abilities. So uh, in particular with Risen Reef, that's gonna be able to dig through the deck quite a bit faster. Jade Light Ranger in here, it not only triggers Volo, but it also explores, so it helps further that game plan. And then of course, Lanoir Elf, which not only ramps us, but triggers the Volo as well. Uh, Heroic Intervention is here to kind of save our stuff. So depending on the deck that we find ourselves against, might be worth pulling that out. We do of course have Finale of Dev Devastation, which can pull the Volo or indeed any other creature that we might need uh, throughout the game. Opt is in here, draws us some cards. It's another way to also win off of the uh, Jace if we happen to activate the ability in the wrong order or something along those lines. Opt does a fantastic job of saving our butts. Uh, but on top of that, we do also have Genesis Ultimatum as the big top end card here. This is going to be able to get a lot of stuff onto the field very, very quickly, hopefully getting lots of triggers uh, and just doing some amazing stuff. Uh, nothing too crazy in the land side of things here. The only major tech land is the Ketria Triome, uh, which we can cycle away as we would like to, but uh, this is a sweet one. This is a really sweet deck. Bread and Fried, you really went above and beyond with this one. I cannot wait to jump into it. I foresee some issues in the historic ladder, but I will say in bot matches, again, I like to test things out first. It's very, very fun. So we're going to give this one a shot, guys. Again, starting off with that creative score of four. Congratulations, Bread and Fried. That's a very strong start. Let's go ahead and see if we can get an extra three points for a total of seven uh, off of these games. Let's jump into it. 
And here we go, guys. Let's go ahead and kick things off. Now, do we want to keep this hand? The trick is if we get a land, we're actually in okay shape. If we don't get a land, we're we're in kind of rough shape. I'm going to risk it. Brandon and Fried, I believe in your deck building skills. I believe in the auto shuffler, <laughs> more importantly. Uh, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. We do have to be a little careful, of course, but we can lead off with the island and then have that Hinterland Harbor come into play untapped in the future. Excuse me, that coffee, man. Um, anyway, guys, I hope you're having a fantastic Monday. I hope you guys have been enjoying these challenge weeks. One thing I want to mention early on in this video. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, one thing I want to mention early on in these videos, though, we need more people submitting to these challenge weeks. We always have really great submissions, and I want to seriously put a huge thank you out to those of you who have already been submitting, because a lot of you have been very consistent about your submissions, and again, that means the world to us. Uh, but we do want to feature other people as well and feature different deck builders and different, you know, themes that people want to put together, different creativity levels even. And so um, I, I want to encourage everybody to share these challenge videos out. Make sure that you're doing your best to push this into people who uh, maybe are really good deck builders that you just happen to know or anything like that. We would really, really appreciate it. That does mean a lot to us. Any little help that like that that you guys can provide. Uh, enables the benefit of the channel to hopefully grow and really push us to where uh, we can hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, further our reach and hopefully become a bigger, better community. So I just want to say, please consider that. Don't feel like you have to do anything. Of course, we're not trying to push anybody to do anything. It just would mean a lot to us if you would give it a shot. Uh, they very well could have a bounce effect here or, you know, something along those lines, which is not good for us because obviously that mirror image then just dies. Um, but we're going to give it a shot. Uh, the reason being we really need lands, uh, so I feel like that's probably worth it. Opt was the other option. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Ooh, that's bad. That's real bad. Um, all right, fair enough. Let's see what the opponent can do. Uh, not a great start for us. We've gotten three Volos in our opening hand here, uh, which is pretty rough, if I'm honest. But thankfully, the opponent's not doing a ton at the moment. Um, all right, so we're going to go for the Volo here. Uh, truth be told, they probably just counter this, but we've got multiples, so <laughs> it's not really that big of a deal anyway. Um, so I don't really care. Um, yep. They're going to counter it with a sensor, no less. Uh, that's very interesting. Um, but that's OK, actually. We burned basically two cards out of their hands, uh, which is great. Hopefully, they just have like a land or something that they play this time. <laughs> Looks like maybe not, but we'll see. Uh, this is just the the mono blue like flash list, I assume. Um, although Ascendant Spirit is a bit of an odd one in this list. I guess it's just a really good beater. Um, and it may be that they're looking for like a curiosity or whatever curious obsession um, to, to start drawing some cards and they just haven't found it. Uh, that's a possibility. OK, um, well. I mean, again, we've got some options. We can Jade Light Ranger, then opt uh, or we can Volo and just go that route. I think I'm going to go Jade Light Ranger uh, and then opt. So this if they do have a counter spell, we at least burn the counter and then get something else played. Uh, which is probably worth it. Okay, got a land and got a land. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and play out this Ketria Triome here, uh, and we'll hold up this Opt. We don't have to worry about it right this second. Um, this isn't the best thing in the world, obviously, but it does give us just something on the field, and it's probably the safer of the two plays. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and Opt here. It doesn't... I don't think it matters that much. We're not really representing anything with just leaving up one blue. Um, I mean, there's certainly things we can represent, but this is not the kind of deck that's looking to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, we do eventually need that, so I'm going to go ahead and take it. Uh, that is our win con, uh, other than just beating face, which is very unlikely for us to win that way, especially when they've got a lot more power on the field than we do. Um, so not super worth it going that route. We'll uh, we'll see what we can do here. Yes, so four, five, six. Um, I think we actually do want to block the Ascendant Spirit. Um, yeah, I think we just need to. This gets to be a problem eventually. Um, 
I guess they had to have like leveled it up again and then leveled it up again, but still, that can be a problem. I guess we should have... Yeah, I guess that was kind of backwards, but that's okay. We do know at least that the opponent probably does not have a counter, which is very, very good for us. Uh, the question is, what do we want to get down here? Um, so we can just drop this, see what we get, and then we do have mirror image as well. I think that might be the play. Let's do this first. Let's see what they do. Um, we are in risk of like super dying here uh, because they could power this up. They can basically just float this. Oh, they've got another sensor. Uh, we'll do this. Yes. We'll auto pay. Um, I feel like we have to get this down. But it really, I don't think it's going to matter. I mean, I think we're just going to die here, sadly. Um, drop this down. We could have shocked it in, but I, it's not worth it. They get to play Brazen Borrower this turn. Ugh, breaded and fried. I don't think it's going to work this time, man. Uh, so sad, because this is such a cool deck. Uh, they're going to cycle the sensor, I assume. Yeah. There's really no reason for them to have sensor at this point since we do have so many lands. Um, but they can activate Faceless Haven, and they have got more than enough power to take us out. Sad day. Ah, oh, we gave it a shot. Uh, Bread and Fried, that is okay, my friend. We, again, still have that very strong creativity score that we're bouncing off of, and we still have two more games. Let's go ahead and jump into game number two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And again, a bit of a slow start. We don't have like a Lanoir Elf to really ramp off of, but we do have Double Risen Reef with some stuff to do. I'm going to go for it. Um, this might be a bad idea, but we'll see. Uh, looks like we are up against the Artifacts list, uh, which is a very scary list. List It is very, very potent, very fast uh, if they do things the right way. So uh, thankfully... While this isn't a slow start by any means, uh, they don't have a ton of power right away. If they do have something like an all that glitters, though, we do become... Uh, why didn't they... Oh, at the... Okay, yeah, I see. I was going to say, why didn't they uh, do the thing? But yeah, that makes sense. At the beginning of the untap or the end step, they get to do that. Um, I mean, we're going to throw a Risen Reef out there. This seems so underpowered in comparison, though. Uh, and again, breaded and fried, while I love this deck, don't get me wrong, I do think this is the slight issue with the deck, and that's fine. It's no big deal, but I think that's the slight issue with this deck is that there are, in historic best of one, there are just so many things that are so fast, uh, and I think we're running into that issue at the moment. Um, I'm taking it, dude. We're, we're going for the cool points here. Yep. We're dead next turn. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I mean, we could have blocked the Voltaic Servant, but that really doesn't do that much. Um, we just do this. It's about the best we can do. Um, they're going to steal Overseer. Look at how powerful this start is. Um, I mean, this is what, turn four? Yep. Didn't even hit a land off the top. That kind of sucks. Uh, yeah, we just do that. Oh, no, we're dead again. <laughs> oh, breaded and fried, my friend. I'm so sorry. Um, we're not getting there. It's okay. It's fine. We'll, we'll figure it out. But, oh, wow. Insult to injury, guys. Insult to injury. Yep, good game. They got it. All right, that's another loss. We got one more game, Breaded and Fried. Let's see if we can get one win with this one. I do want to see this work uh, because it is really, really fun when it does. So let's give it one more shot. Let's see if we can do it. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And again, a bit of a slow start, but we do have all the lands we need. We also have Risen Reef and Volo. I feel like we have to keep it. Um, and maybe I'm being like not aggressive enough. Oh, man. We're gonna have a hard time against this too. <laughs> um, maybe I'm having, I, I'm being um, less aggressive than I need to be with my mulligans. I don't know, breaded and fried. Uh, if you are watching or if you wanna share in the comments, maybe I did something a little more incorrect than you uh, necessarily expected. But um, let me know in the comments section. I'd be interested to know, should I be mulliganing hands like this where I've only got you know a, a three drop or something like that in hopes of getting a Lanoir Elf? Or is it worth it just to hold on to it uh, because it guarantees, you know, we've got something on turn three. Uh, we're going to drop that. Don't need another opt. Uh, land is fine. Um, 
So there's a Llanowar elf. Uh, that's helpful. Um, <laughs> okay. So, oh crap. Can we cancel? Nope. All right. Well, we're doing it. Uh, that was a mistake. Meant to play the island, not the, but that's fine. Um, all right. Was really hoping for a land off the top because that would mean next turn we can Volo plus Llanowar Elf, but we didn't get there. Um, we're just having kind of bad luck too. I think a little bit of this is just pure bad luck, but it's fine. Um, wow, so good. So good. Um, gains first strike. Good lord, that's so powerful. Um, I mean, what do we do? <laughs> I'm gonna block this. I don't know what the right call is there. Like, we're so dead. <laughs> um, this is so sad. Oh, Brennan and Fried, I'm so sorry, man. Like, this is such a sweet deck. It really is. The creativity level is there. It's solely that one where uh, it's a very it's a semi slow deck against a lot of the best of one ladder which is let me be clear a part of this challenge so that's just something that everybody has to think about and that's okay but man oh sad day well okay we'll talk about this one for a minute we'll uh we'll see what we think all right, Brandon and Fried. So just to recap very, very quickly, uh, your creative score was amazing. A solid four. Honestly, I would be willing to push it to a five if if uh, if we had the opportunity to do that. But I'm going to I'm going to keep it at a four solely because uh, I, I couldn't start off with a five this week. I just feel like that's terrible. But regardless, the deck was amazing. It was a really fun list. It just didn't get to work on the ladder. Now, I want to I want to make a very strong point here, which is to say when you are building your decks, regardless of what challenge it is, anything like that, be thinking about what we will be playing it against, because I think it's very important to keep in mind while creativity is important. You do have to balance that with the simple fact that it does have to try and win games at some point. Now, the, the attempt is there, breaded and fried. Let me be very clear. It just is a bit slow for the best of one ladder, and that's OK. Uh, I expect a lot of these more creative decks to be a bit slower, and so I don't think that that's unreasonable. I would have very much liked to have seen it done its thing, uh, as as you've mentioned in Discord, how it kind of works. I, I did want to kind of see that on the on the games, but we unfortunately didn't, and that's OK. Uh, but regardless, I really do appreciate the submission. Again, guys, if anybody would like to submit Please check out that Discord link down below. The Challenge Submissions channel is there for you. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I hope your Monday is going exceptionally well. I know it's the start of a new week and sometimes that's a little bit challenging, but I wish you all the absolute best. I love you all. Have a fantastic week. I will see you on Wednesday for part two of the Volo Challenge. What's going on guys? If you enjoyed this video and would love to check out some more, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you get notified whenever we have a new video posted.